and welcome to my idea for a South by Southwest panel. It's called, I'm into jobs that don't even exist yet. My name is Cindy Royal and I'm an associate professor at Texas State University in the School of Journalism and Mass Communication. I teach web design and digital media concepts and I've been doing that for the past 12 years. And I got the idea for this panel last semester when I had invited some recent graduates of our program to return to speak to current students about their career choices and to give them some advice. And I realized as they were talking that in many cases, these former students had moved into positions that didn't even exist when they were in our program. They were new roles, they had moved into companies that didn't exist that had completely new and different business models. So after the panel, I made a blog post and I began referring to this as the hipster method. It was inspired by that ironic hipster t-shirt that says I'm into bands that don't even exist yet because I realized as an educator, I'm training students to move into roles that don't exist yet, but may come about very quickly. And professionals are hiring students, recruiting candidates, and expecting them to be able to develop new roles. So I decided to interview a few of my former students to see how they felt about this hipster method and to see how they felt they were able to move into these new kinds of jobs. First, I'd like you to meet these graduates and hear about the types of jobs that mass communication majors are now doing. Currently, on a daily basis, I create content for all of our social networks, and um, it's really a jack of all trades. I sometimes do video and photos, or I'll create new pins on Pinterest and um, create new content on Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr, so it's really multifaceted. Uh, Mason Zimbler does a lot of uh, business to business marketing, uh, mostly online, like almost entirely online stuff. And what I'm doing in particular is designing uh, HTML emails and landing pages. For right now, that's what I'm doing uh, for clients. And I'll also be working with uh, marketing automation software in the future. Currently, I am the social media editor at the Austin American Statesman. and. Um, a lot of the things that I learned throughout uh, graduate school and a little bit in undergrad too kind of helped propel me to where I am today. After I graduated, I became the webmaster of Concordia University, Texas, and I worked there for five and a half years as their designer and their sort of web presence guru, for lack of a better word. Um, now I'm back in school. I'm studying to get my master's of science in information science with a focus on information architecture specifically and I'm looking towards going to a PhD in web science. I'm the interactive manager at Mozak Advertising and Insights. We're a small ad agency here in Austin, Texas. As the interactive manager, I uh, basically lead the digital and interactive team, and we do everything from web design to redesign to social media for clients to working with uh, email blast campaigns, uh, text marketing. I'm a digital media intern for Mosec Advertising and Insights, working with social media analytics and web development. So that's quite a diversity of responsibility and maybe even surprising in terms of what you might expect a mass communication major to be doing. The first question I asked each of them was to talk about the things that they learned in school that best helped them secure and perform their job responsibilities. Graduate school was incredibly important uh, for this job. Learning theory, uh, understanding what was already discovered out there, that helps uh, just give you a basic knowledge. But then actual nuts and bolts learning, uh, learning how to code, uh, just understanding how it all works, making sure that you get those basic building blocks and then I can build off that within my job. Also just being around other people that push you, uh, other students and professors. Really towards the end of my uh, undergraduate uh, career, I, you know, I took my first multimedia class and just really learned a lot there. Um, you know, I had kind of played with multimedia before and I knew a little bit of coding going in, but this is really where I got to expand my skills and really felt like this is what interest me, interested me the most in. I also knew it was a direction that journalism was going in, so once I got into graduate school, I got to really expand on those skills and um, did some research around that as well. And um, you know, it was a lot of networking too. We did a lot of great projects that helped me um, 
you know, meet some professionals that are out there in the field that are doing really cool things. I think definitely taking the, the web design class was huge because um, it made me comfortable enough to be on the web and figure things out for myself and kind of do my own troubleshooting and, and sort of made me realize like how easy it was to sort of be on the web and change what's out there about you or about your company, whatever it might be. What really helped me, I feel like, was learning how to solve my own problems, like how to troubleshoot my own things or where to go to look for answers to problems. And uh, it, it's been a lot of that that I've been doing. If I run into something I can't find, I've got to figure out how to do it myself. You know, nobody's going to hold my hand. In school, I learned the importance of promotion early on. And when social media came around, I learned how the two could work together. I then asked them to talk about the things that they had been required to learn on their own. So school doesn't, you know, give you everything. Uh, it doesn't, you know, prepare you 100%. You do have to go out there and do stuff on your own. And something like our field, which is constantly growing and is extremely volatile, uh, and the movement of, of technology, it gets quicker and quicker and quicker. You have to learn on your own. Database type languages, I've learned Cold Fusion, PHP, MySQL. So a lot of those things have been a, a crucial part of my development as sort of a professional and now a student. Um, and yeah, I couldn't be where I am without learning those things on my own. Uh, the things that I had to learn on my own were really just, they were things that I was able to um, use other concepts that I've learned from school, like how to use Joomla, even though I wasn't familiar with it. I was able to take concepts from how to use Drupal and kind of um, mesh those together, like this is a module here and a module here. I thought there would be more of like an onboarding, kind of easing it into the thing, and they really just showed me where my computer was and they all got back to work. So you've really got to be ready to hit the ground running when you start at something like this. The final thing I asked the graduates was what advice they had for current students. Have that learning mindset. Like if you love to learn, I think that's the most important thing. You just always have to be out there looking for something new to learn. Stay up on current events in tech, read a lot, try out new technology and new stuff that you read about, just stay as close to the cutting edge as you can on this kind of stuff. I want someone who shows initiative that wants to take on certain roles and may not know how to do something, but will go, alright, this is kind of the idea, this is where we want to go with it, if you can do this, how do we do this? And if that person goes, I don't know, but I'll figure it out, that's the person we want on the team create a blog for yourself, a website, social networks, and be prepared with a handful of links to hand over to your future employer. So you don't even need a regular resume. You have five links with your name on it and creative content. Just go for it. Just go for it. That's all I can say. And just be willing to learn any and everything and use any and every tool that's out there. I then decided to ring up on Skype my friend, Aaron Pilhoffer. He is the director of interactive news and social media at the New York Times, and he's agreed to be on this panel should it be accepted. Aaron has a lot of experience with this so-called hipster method in terms of the new roles he's had to perform throughout his career, but also in terms of the recruiting he's done for the positions at the New York Times. We're both doing jobs that didn't exist when we were graduating from college, but is there something different about the environment now that new graduates going out into the world um, that, that makes the environment somewhat different than what we experienced? Yeah, I mean, you have obviously huge differences in the industry around news. You have an incredible amount of entrepreneurialism that's coming into news, both in and out of newsrooms. You have a tech cycle that seems to be getting more and more compressed uh, every day. I mean, just today we were having a meeting about a new feature, social media uh, uh, site had launched, you know, less than a year ago, and saying how now this thing is gonna is gonna go away. And I mean, you have to be able to respond to stuff more quickly than ever before, and you have to be more flexible, uh, more forward looking, and you have to sort of, on a, almost a daily basis, reimagine what it means to be a journalist. So, in the panel, should it be accepted for South by Southwest, we'll probably go over some of the strategies you have for recruiting people that would be successful in moving into these new roles. Maybe you could share one of your recruiting strategies that helps you identify candidates. 
Yeah, I mean, I look for, it's not necessarily an age thing. So I look for people who are, in my, my particular case, I look for people who are outstanding developers and outstanding technologists, but also who have a real journalistic sensibility. Um, I recruit in non-traditional places. I recruit in places where, where I find people who have never been in a newsroom before. Um, that's, that's what I'm looking for. But I am, thankfully, finding more and more people coming out of journalism schools, out of journalism programs, who could qualify, who could start working in a position uh, on a team like my own. I think what we'll do is probably discuss some strategies for developing a mindset as opposed to any specific skills that somebody would necessarily need, both from an educator's perspective as well as from a professional's perspective. Do you think that that is um, appropriate? I, I totally agree, and for me, that is the fundamental thing I look for as a mindset. I mean, obviously, you have to be um, a great technologist. You have to have some journalistic sensibilities, but really, fundamentally, it's about the mindset. It's about being able to adapt. It's about being able to look a little bit ahead, and it's about not being afraid to constantly question. And from my perspective, I'm obviously interested in students and probably other faculty attending our talk. What other kinds of people should attend our talk from your perspective? Yeah, and I think that you could actually get a lot out of it if, it, if, if you were just someone um, not in a university setting, if you were a working journalist, a mid-career professional, uh, somebody who at this point was wondering, hey, what do I have to do? Uh, to stay relevant um, in in uh, today's newsrooms, but also even as a somebody who's interested in what's going on in journalism, this might be a, a panel that they might find interesting to see to see kind of like how things are changing. If we're accepted to South by Southwest, Aaron and I will address these and many other issues related to the rapidly changing job market. We'd love it if you cared to like or comment on this panel proposal. And as always, I'm looking forward to a really fun South by Southwest next March. Thank you for listening. Lately I've been feeling